Hello everybody. I don't have anything prepared. I wanted to speak from the heart. This is incredibly difficult for me. Um, but I want to make a video for Benzodiazepine World Awareness Day, which is July 11th, which is today. I didn't make one last year because honestly, to even tell my story, as a lot of people that have recovered from this disorder find, um, find it very difficult to talk about their past um, issues with it because it's a very, very traumatizing experience. Um, some people have PTSD from the experience and I, I personally do. I um, feel like I have a very fulfilled and healed life now um, because of the coping skills I learned actually in um, my disorder or my syndrome. And so I use those skills every day and I feel like I have a very productive, you know, quote unquote, normal life again. But um, recalling the story kind of puts you back there and it's really hard to deal with because it was very traumatizing. I would say, yes, the most traumatizing thing I have ever experienced. And a lot of people in the group that I moderate for, um, which I won't mention because I don't know about the privacy issues, but if you're in my group, you know. Um, have um, mentioned that um, a few members have been through cancer or their only child. I mean, think about how horrible it is. Their only child died and this was worse than that, which is unbelievable. You can't even think of a pain worse than that. But unfortunately, bind, especially if you CT like I did, will definitely be the worst experience of your life for sure hands down, like no question, because what this disorder does to people, now this is triggering. If you are currently experiencing withdrawal, maybe just pause this and watch something else, but I wanna disclose I'm getting to triggering information right now. Um, but um, if you experience this disorder like I did, which is I cold turkeyed the medication because it no longer was working for me, so the drug turned almost paradoxical and, and it started, I think, getting worse when I would take it. So I just thought, well, you know, once I found out it was this medicine, which was Xanax that was doing this harm to me, um, I was experiencing major insomnia, paranoid delusions, um, zombie-like states, cognitive difficulties. Some of you might have seen me go live and not really be, be completely checked out, not remembering anything I said or did. Um, what else? Um, I started having yeah, major anxiety, um, some body pains and aches, but not full force yet. Um, a lot of kind of delusions and paranoid thinking, but not full psychosis. But I started, when I couldn't sleep for days on end, I, I realized something was wrong. My cognitive ability wasn't there. I started having trouble thinking, the, the, thinking or remembering the simplest of things. And a couple people nearest to me messaged me and said, you're not okay, what's wrong? And we, when I got to the heart of it, they're like, I think it's this medication that you're taking. I was taking it for anxiety. And I was taking it off and on for 10 years. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna full disclosure, originally it was medically um, prescribed to me. I have multiple mental health disorders um, and anxiety being one of the issues that I suffer from along with severe depression. And some of those issues, I felt like it, it was the only thing that temporarily helped me out of that, those states. Um, so I kind of go off and on. Some doctors would, you know, prescribe it longer than others, but you know, even two weeks, which I would definitely was prescribed that longer than that a few times, um, ca can cause this syndrome. But a lot of the doctors that were giving this to me didn't know that. And so I thought that I was going crazier and crazier. I thought that all my sleep issues and my cognitive issues were part of my mental disorder and it wasn't these medications making it um, these symptoms. Um, so if that makes sense, I thought it was my mental disorder and not these drugs that were um, the, the root cause of this stuff. And when someone finally came to me, I was like, what kind of meds are you taking? I was explaining, well, I take Xanax sometimes for panic attacks, but I've been taking it like every day for like three, four weeks straight because of my panic. And during the COVID situation, when that first hit and me not having that routine, that job sent me into a tailspin. And so I was taking it every day and eventually it just, something in me just said, nope, 
um, and I hit tolerance. And then that's when things, oh look, the car crashed down the street. Yeah, just like that. Just tailspin down of control. And I'm gonna briefly talk about that now. I'm gonna sit down and try to ground myself to say that part. Um, <sighs> it's using the coping skills right now. Nice. So basically when I had my CT, um, I lost all touch with reality. And if you haven't ever experienced that, it's a lot more scary than even you imagine. So any kind of horror movie you saw, scarier than that. Um, and it really does feel like a horror movie. I was so out of touch with reality that I had um, depersonalization and derealization, which if you don't know what those things are, it means that you think, you feel as if you are unreal and you're like, what the heck is this? <laughs> and then you also see your world as unreal. So it's kind of like you're a broken doll in a broken video game. I don't know if uh, that's the best way to explain it, but that's how I felt. I felt like, oh my gosh, like I, everything went from 3D to 2D. Everything seemed gray and flat and lifeless. When birds were flying outside, I'll never forget. I was terrified to see a bird fly outside and its arms looked all mechanical. It was going like that and really kind of like slow and jerky. And I thought, oh my God, nothing's real. So I try to theorize with my crazy brain in the moment, like what could be causing these issues? Like, why do I see reality this way? And I, and I thought, I really did think this. I thought I had died. And the COVID thing was some kind of conspiracy because I had complete psychosis at that point. And I thought that I died and that I was in hell. And I couldn't figure it out because I thought I'm, I was a good person. I did I was nice to everyone. Why did, why did I end up here? And a lot of people that are suffering and been to patrols ask me this. And I, t I have, it's, heart it's heartbreaking. And I tell them, you know what? I don't know why we have to experience this. I know now that we're divinely connected. I believe that through and through. And oh my gosh, if this is like a spiritual test, my goodness, why does it have to be so hard? I don't know. I wish I had the answer to that because it feels very unfair when you experience something that horrible. Um, other things I experienced, I couldn't talk properly. I would stutter sometimes, but sometimes I couldn't even form words. And I'd just go, uh, 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 because you feel panicked when you can't communicate. Couldn't walk. I would stumble around my room. It was really hard to walk properly. Um, I couldn't eat for days because it, I can't explain this, but only people with this syndrome understand, with the, which is benzo withdrawal syndrome, or they call it BIND now, which I always say it wrong, so hopefully I'll remember because they just came out with it, is benzodiazepine induced neurological, I think it's dysfunction or disorder. That's what it stands for. I'm so glad they changed the name because when you call it a withdrawal syndrome, people, the doctors will say, well, you're no longer in withdrawal. No, mm, Sherlock. Um, so that's why thankfully they changed it. That yeah, it's a neurological issue at this point and we're, and it takes time to heal from it. So even if it's out of your system for weeks or months or years, it can still cause your mind and body to have severe symptoms, which is what happened to me. So getting back into the horror mode, oh my gosh. Okay, so I had 50 unique pain symptoms. Let's pause and think about that. 50 unique pain symptoms. So like, it's unfathomable. Yeah, some people have a broken arm or a headache or, you know, God forbid, you know, something really bad. I won't even say a comparison because I don't want to compare, but just say you usually experience one horrible thing in your body or maybe two or three or four. But when you experience 50 unique pain symptoms at once, you're literally being skewered alive with pain sensations throughout your body. Not only are you skewered alive with different little like stabbing pains throughout your body, muscle jerks that'd be going like this, movement disorders. Um, I had a bunch of cognitive issues, right? Couldn't remember anything. I would just, my, I would have cold and hot sensations running through my body. I had electrical like zaps. I had, um, 
I had, I had basically things that were, I felt like I was being puppeteered and, and like all these symptoms were raging through my body and my mind. And I would say the mental for me was the worst, even though the pain was really unbearable um, because I didn't feel like I, had, I knew what reality was at that point in time, which is super scary. I didn't think anything was real. I didn't think I was real. I had panic intrusive thoughts were basically telling me to another trigger warning. Hopefully no one is watching this, still in this, but um, to kill myself every day. And I, and I really was like, okay, why well, I'm in hell? There's no other explanation for this excruciating torture. This is, this is not something that could be possible in reality. But um, Hunter, my partner at the time, would assure me, no, Rebecca, you are real. You are real. Um, if you were dead, you wouldn't be feeling all these sensations, which kind of brought me back to reality. So thank you for that, Hunter. Um, and so, um, but I didn't 100% believe him sometimes. I remember thinking the pain would get so bad. I was like, no, I guess just Satan really hates me or something. Um, and in those moments, I would just say the names of my loved ones, like Karen Newbold, Richard Newbold, Jennifer Polanco, Sky Polanco, and just so on, my friends I loved. And I, would say, and I came to a point where I was like, I guess I will live for them in hell because I know this would devastate them if I ended it, but you know, that's what I wanted to do at the time because it was just so unbearable. You can't imagine, but luckily that love got me through. And I just want to shout out because I know people have mentioned this in group and it breaks my heart to hear that when they say, I don't have a loved one, Rebecca, to hold on to. That is just, it hurts my heart to hear. And so for those people, live for the future you that is loving life and live for your future friends and your future family that you're gonna make when you get out of this withdrawal. Live for them and make, and make that a reality and make that a focus and a grounding point for you. Because so I do think that love really can pull you out of this thing and make you stay the course. And if you don't have anyone to love, love yourself. I learned to love myself and withdrawal. Oh my God, parts to myself that I had hidden away uh, out of shame, I had, it was just, it's amazing. It's amazing what severe pain can do to you. It's it's really hard to say this because it is so horrible, but it did make me become the best version of myself, which is crazy to say because I'm telling you it is the most horrible thing. Don't even think that it's not. It was the most horrible thing to happen to me, but yet I learned things that could have helped me years ago. Like they should be teaching meditation and grounding skills to children. If I had those skill sets to be able to focus on my breathing every day and focus on grounding my emotions and sitting with them and not running away from them and not taking things to knock it out, um, my gosh. Also body scanning at night to be able to relax my own body to go to bed. The coping skills I've learned in the groups have helped me so much get through this. Amazing. I just want to... Uh, briefly mention another thing um, sometimes we're in this disorder like I was I had CT'd and if you CT you have a 21 day window I believe to reinstate and and taper safely so if you are one of those people who um, are still in it and are like oh I, I just stopped it a week ago and I'm in this horrible experience you can still reinstate and taper off safely which the Ashton manual is the only manual that they've done where they studied people withdrawing off these medications and found the best way to taper them down. So if you don't know the Ashton manual, manual please Google it and find that information to help you taper safely. Um, another thing I wanna mention is when you CT or even if you don't CT sometimes, they'll try to poly drug you with multiple other medications like a Band-Aid to stop the bleeding, if you will. But it does it make it worse? Yes, oftentimes it does. Most of the times I would say, 98% of the time I've seen in, in the groups that I moderate for. And I moderate and see thousands of people mention these things. And what it, it does is they put other medications and it acts like a Band-Aid, but that still, there's still, that, uh, that, uh, that healing that needs to take place and it can further damage your central nervous system and, and cause dysregulation and, and more issues. So please, if you can, safely taper off your, the benzodiazepine, use the Ashton manual, use the coping skills. It's really hard, but if you can just taper off that and just get through that, that's wonderful. If they, you've already been polydrugged, taper one at a time. 
taper the benzodiazepine first, then this, you know, the second, then the third, um, so that your system system isn't overwhelmed with tapers. That can be a horrendous experience and cause further damage as well. <sighs> See, I, I've been just kind of streaming this. Uh, I don't, I didn't want to have a little plan because I wanted this to come from the heart. But as you can tell, one of my issues is ADHD. So I've been kind of ping ponging around. So hopefully I'm getting all the information that is needed to you. Um, and I'm not, I, you know, I don't need to name every single symptom. Um, those of you in which all know, and those of you that don't, it's just, it's just the worst. And I think I covered some of the worst ones for me anyway. The panic attacks, I forgot to mention, were the very, very, one of the very, very worst ones I did mention actually. And basically what a panic attack is, if you've never experienced it, it's like a car is about to hit you and you're like, ah! like the, the worst, like ah! adrenaline, ah! that, but every three seconds on a loop for days. Yeah, so I literally would be going like this. <gasps> and, and you know, the people that were around me at the time can verify. Yeah, we saw you going, ah, I can't, ah, ah, you know, and I would go to the ER right when COVID hit. I was in this panic attacks and didn't know what, you know all about what COVID was because I was in this horrible thing and I'd be seeing COVID tents and I'd be like, oh my gosh, at the worst time to be having panic attacks and going to the hospital. And I was so paranoid about the COVID then too. That, that was its own nightmare. And I, so I won't even mention that because that was a horrible, horrible experience for me. So I'm just not gonna mention that. Um, I know that a lot of people wanna go to these hospitals or detox sites or like have someone monitor them, which sounds comforting. Like I'm gonna have a doctor, they're monitoring me. But some of these doctors are gonna pump you or rip you f off the meds so you don't taper safely sometimes or dump other meds that can complicate the situation. I know that sounds crazy. You're like, but they, they should know. Well, not all of these hospitals and doctors do know and have that information. So that's why we're trying to circulate this information awareness. And if, you know, your doctor doesn't know and um, you're on benzodiazepines, you know, taper off slowly. You can use the Ashton Manual as a guide. Um, and then after your taper, then then maybe send in an email format um, that to your, your doctor and say, hey, this is what I used to get off this, by the way. It was causing me a lot of damages. You could tell your full story after. And um, this really helped me. So maybe you could read and look into it and um, use it for your, your clients in the future. Because we need to raise the awareness of this uh, on an individual level, which I'm trying to do now to my friends and family and to the people in the community even who don't have all the information. And also, I think we should get this information to doctors. And I know a lot of people are like, well, is this doctor bashing? No, there's lots of great doctors who do wonderful things. My grandfather's a psychiatrist, okay? And a lot of doctors in my family. But a lot of them aren't educated on these pharmaceutical drugs. A lot of them only have one year of pharmacy training. Imagine all the drugs that they have to prescribe and one year. So they're basically looking at the Cliff Notes version, just so you know. When you think, oh, they know for sure they gave me this drug, it has to be safe. No, not necessarily. Sometimes they look at the possible draw symptoms, but their client's saying, I need something now. And so they're like, well, it's worth the risk. Please believe nothing is worth the risk for this disorder. Nothing, nothing. So yes, the people that are having severe panic attacks for one or two days, they give it to you, fine. But if they prescribe it for more than two weeks, know that you are potentially potentially getting one of the worst syndromes in the world. So really weigh that gamble if that's worth it. And trust me, please believe it's not. Please understand that it's not worth the gamble. So I hope this story helps somebody. Sending all my love to all the people that are suffering with this horrible bind disorder. And know that I'm rooting for your full recovery and I love you. And I also am sending my love to all the invisible illness people out there. I see you, you're valid, and your pain is real. And I hope it ends. I love you all.